light this candle as a symbol of Christ our hope. May the light sent from God shine in the darkness to show us the way to salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Blessed are you, holy and living one. You come to your people and set them free. Almighty God, all hearts, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Baruch. Take off the garment of your sorrow and affliction, O Jerusalem, and put on forever the beauty of the glory from God. Put on the robe of righteousness that comes from God. Put on your head the diadem of the glory of the everlasting. For God will show your splendor everywhere under heaven. For God will give you evermore the name, righteousness, peace, godly glory. Arise, O Jerusalem, stand upon the height, look toward the east, and see your children gathered from west and east at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that God has remembered them. For they went out from you on foot, led away by their enemies. But God will bring them back to you, carried in glory as on a royal throne. For God has ordered that every high mountain and the everlasting hills be made low and the valleys filled up to make level ground so that Israel may walk safely in the glory of God. The woods and every fragment, fragrant tree have shaded Israel at God's command for God will lead Israel with joy in the light of his glory with the mercy and righteousness that comes from him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you, because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ, you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The sequence hymn is incorrect in the bulletin and is correct on the board up top. Hymn 75, there's a voice in the wilderness crying. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, where, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ruler of the region of Atyria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias ruler of, Abilene, ruler of Abilene during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
In the name of the one holy and living God, amen. Amen. Every Wednesday morning, during the first year of the pandemic at 8 a.m., our bishop held a clergy meeting. It was mostly housekeeping matters, what's happening with the pandemic, what are our latest protocols, that kind of thing. Our vestry did the same thing, weekly meetings. The bishop's meetings have moved to a monthly schedule, and this past Wednesday, the bishop was meeting with other bishops from Province 4, the area that our diocese and the Diocese of Georgia sit in. The Bishop of of Georgia, Frank Loge, was a guest at our meeting this week. Bishop Wright wanted us to hear Bishop Logue's story of the Ahmed Arbery case, the case of the young black man who was followed while jogging and killed by three men in a pickup truck in Brunswick. If you miss the news, it's important to know that the three men were found guilty of murder. Bishop Logue started the story with his installation as bishop in May of last year, 2020 and how he began his tenure just months after the murder of Arbery in February. He remarked that from the beginning, he could not view the case as something about others, what other people had done to someone else. It's far too easy to look at matters of injustice, egregious and heinous acts, and wonder who those people are and be repulsed by them. Who would follow a jogger and shoot him because they thought he was up to something no good? Here's why. From the beginning of his tenure as bishop, Bishop Lowe could not do that. The men in the truck are Episcopalians. The shooters, probably just crossing the doors of the church from time to time, but the videographer was an active member of a local Episcopal church. Arbery died on property belonging to a member of an Episcopal church. The judge is an active member of an Episcopal church. Also present in this Georgia community is an active ecumenical interfaith and interracial clergy group, including our Episcopal clergy. As soon as the video became known, this group authored and signed a letter asking the GBI to get involved in the case. Until that time, the case looked like it would get buried by local officials refusing to press charges against someone they knew well, perhaps even forgotten given the pandemic. A few things you might find interesting. The video was made and distributed by the assailants because they believed that it showed the world just how right they were to shoot Arbery, but it became evidence to the contrary. Also, the press repeatedly interviewed Episcopal clergy in the area, one African-American clergy member in particular, but you won't find the interviews. Perhaps, as Bishop Logue suggested, the ideas in the interviews were too complex. Justice demanded for such a heinous crime. Love and compassion for the family of the victim calls for calm and peace from clergy and concern and love for the people who committed the violence and their families. Our Bishop, Bishop Logue and Kevin Strickland, Bishop of the Southeastern Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, issued a joint press release that you can find on the Diocese of Georgia's website. I want to read it to you because it paints a full picture. Here's here's the release. The jury charged with handing down a verdict in the case of three men accused of murder for their roles in the death of Ahmed Arbery issued its decision today, finding Travis McMichael guilty of malice murder and other charges Gregory McMichael, guilty guilty of felony murder and other charges, and Roddy Bryan, guilty of felony, felony murder and other charges. We give thanks for the dedicated work of the judge and jurors who served in a charged atmosphere with intense public scrutiny. 
Any verdict arrives too late to offer true justice in this case. Ahmad Arbery is dead and the court cannot return him to his family. Nonetheless, this moment is an important one. We prayed for the court to bring earthly justice and the court has acted. But it took public outcry and the release of a video of the incident to force the system into action. The three men who are now convicted of crimes were initially shielded from facing their accusers in court. Until we can bring equity to the system that initially protected them, the rest of us will not have done what we can to create the just system for which we long. Our country has not dealt with the racism built into the system at its founding and perpetrated perpetuated until this day. Living into our faith means addressing directly any sin we see in our lives and in our communities. Divisions around the human-made concept of race are an offense against our faith, which teaches that all people are made in God's image and likeness. Jesus taught us to love God and love our neighbors as ourselves. Through his parable of the Good Samaritan, Jesus made it clear that all are our neighbors. Any racial divide breaks the heart of God. One bright spot of hope we have seen emerge, from, emerge following Ahmed's tragic death has been the interfaith group of clergy in Glen County. Their clarion call for justice after the video surfaced was critical in getting attention to this case. They followed this call by engaging in candid conversations that drew them together, even as other forces could have deepened divisions. Participants included clergy from all five Episcopal churches in the county and those of many other denominations, as well as leaders of Jewish and Muslim congregations. New stories have often quoted the, the clergy who were consistently engaged offering a non-anxious presence on the courthouse grounds. They have witnessed to the dream of God, all of us becoming beloved community, not divided by ethnicity, but united in our common humanity. We know that long after the cameras and reporters are gone, the clergy in Glen County will still be working together toward that dream. We hope not just for good, to overcome evil, but for God to redeem even the worst tragedies and the gravest injustices. While the court has acted, the work of healing and justice remains. Maya Angelou said, do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, do better. The Episcopal Diocese of Georgia offers the following resources, and there's a list of resources, including those from our own diocese. And they continue. It does not take an evil person to do an evil act. Murder is evil. Ahmad's killing was evil, but we need to guard against demonizing anyone or denying their basic humanity. The accused have been convicted they will serve their sentences and need our prayers that they may be awakened to repentance. In this, as with all of us, we pray that God will bring all who are guilty to repentance and amendment of life and give us all hope for the future. In that spirit, we offer this prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give thanks for the judge and jurors charged with bringing earthly justice in the death of Ahmad Arbery. Be with the Arbery family and all in the Brunswick and Glen County community as they seek further healing. Be with Gregory, Travis, and Roddy and their families as they serve their sentences and work toward their own repentance. Be with all of us as we seek repentance and healing for ourselves one another in our communities. Give us all the grace to hunger and thirst for your righteousness, that we may work together to become the beloved community to which you call us. 
This we ask for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. They end the letter by saying, May God grant us grace to see the healing needed in our lives, our communities, and our families in Christ. And it's, it's signed by the three bishops. Early in the week when I was reading the lessons and preparing for today's sermon, I was struck by the message in Baruch. We have all heard the reading from Isaiah quoted in Luke's Gospel, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth. Honestly, it's always been a little puzzling to me, but Baruch clarified its meaning to me, and Baruch was writing just five years, it's believed, after the destruction of Jerusalem by the Babylonians, and here's how Baruch puts it. For God has ordered that every high mountain and the everlasting hills be made low and the valleys filled up to make level ground so that Israel may walk safely in the glory of God. So that Israel may walk safely in the glory of God. What I see in the story from our brothers and sisters in the Diocese of Georgia is the church working with God to level the ground so that we may all walk in safety in God's glory. We have a lot to overcome in our country and in our world. It's overwhelming to give it much thought. If the external isn't enough, there are challenges in our own homes with our health, with relationships with children or parents. I offer you the story of a broad faith community in South Georgia to tell the story that the press just can't find the words to tell. Take this one sentence as an example, an ecumenical, interfaith, interracial clergy group. Christians usually deeply divided about things over theology and morality. Christians, Jews, and Muslims coming together in South Georgia. White and black clergy coming together over three white men murdering a young black man. It's otherworldly and is evidence of God making a safe passage for us with ripple effects in the world. If it's happening in South Georgia, it's happening all around us, all of the time. That's God's Advent promise, that like the seed under the ground, buried and hidden from view, God's kingdom is ready to burst forth. As Baruch tells us, take off the garment of your sorrow and affliction, O Jerusalem, and put on forever the beauty of the glory from God. Put on the robe of righteous, the righteousness that comes from God, Put on your head the diadem of the glory of the everlasting, for God will show your splendor everywhere under heaven. May God's grace be with you this day and carry you through this Advent season. Amen. And then let us affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. 
he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into the and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the, and the life of the world to come. Amen. the prayers of the people. May we pray responsibly. Faithful God, stir up your strength and come to help us as we look for the revealing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear our prayers and strengthen us to the end as we pray. Restore us, O God of hopes. Show us the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. We give thanks to you, our living, loving God, for the grace you have given us in Christ Jesus. Enrich your church in speech and knowledge of every kind that she may not be lacking in any spiritual gift and may be awake, alert, and blameless. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show us the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Come among us with great power and glory, O shepherd of your people. Shine forth and give to all the earth the light of your presence. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show us the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Be near to this community at our very gates and within our hearts, and do not hide your face from us, that we may know your glory in the evening and at midnight and at cock crow and at dawn, and not be found asleep at the day of your coming. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show us the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Compassionate one, open the heavens and come down with your healing grace for those for whom we pray, including Robin, Lindsay, Sophia Marie, Judith B, for Bob, Dolores, Mary Lou, Pat, Joan, and Jeanette. And Jane. We, we give thanks for the grace and peace that come from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, offering our special gratitude for the birthdays of Mackenzie, Joan, Jordan, Connie, Bailey, Gail, Nancy, and Phoenix, and anniversaries of Kathleen and Ben, Holly and Michael. May your angels gather your beloved into the day of triumph as we remember those who have died, including Susan Morgan, Rebecca, Rebecca Redding, victims of the Michigan school shooting, and the victims in Washkesha, Wash, Wisconsin. Restore us, O God of hosts, No one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, O Holy One. You are the potter and we are the clay, the work of your hand. Shine forth upon your creation, stir up your strength and come to help us as we put our trust in you, O Father, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, in the power of your Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. 
most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your grace. To the Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Clair's Episcopal Church. Whoever you are, wherever you are on your spiritual journey, we welcome you to this place and to our table. And a special welcome if you're joining us um, on Facebook Live this morning. A couple of announcements. Um, I want to, for us to hold, and I know you heard the word, the name Susan Morgan in the prayers of the people. Susan is Bill Breedlove's wife who died suddenly. Um, Bill is the rector at Good Shepherd in Hayesville, so hold them and um, in that community in your prayers if you would. Uh, lessons and Carols is tonight at 7 o'clock. It's Advent Lessons and Carols. And if you haven't been to one of the Lessons and Carols services, it is a reading, a series of readings and choral responses and hymn responses. 7 o'clock, we'll have some nice candlelight. Um, it's a lovely service. No sermon that you have to sit through. It's just a nice Lessons and Carols service. Uh, Christmas flowers, there are envelopes in your pews if you want to make a gift. Um, to our flower guild in memory or honor of someone that um, memorial or honor will be printed in our Christmas Eve bulletin. We continue to collect items for the food pantry this month and hope you'll give generously. The food pantry is um, at a low right now. Also, the Mountain Community Chorus has a concert this afternoon at 3 o'clock, so I hope you... Um, Next week. Sorry. Young Hair College, Young Hair's College Choir is to, today. 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 What time? Three. Three. Okay, I got the events mixed up. So next week is Mountain Community Course um, at Sharp Memorial United Methodist Church. I think that's it. Have I missed anything? Okay. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
I want to remind the congregation that our Eucharistic prayer is from Enriching Our Worship and is found in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation, your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for, your, poured out for, you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, remembering Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come. We offer you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with Claire and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared for the, from the foundation of the world. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as the Savior, as Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love and make haste to be kind. And during this blessed Advent season, may the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.